Ethical Media presents companion material for the book Saul, David, and Solomon, Lessons in Faith, written by Sheila McDade. Part 6. Saul's Sin Saul had been king for two years when he called up an army to defend against the Philistines. The Philistines had been implementing a plan to claim Israel for a long time. They had some way seen to it that Israel was not allowed to have blacksmiths, thus they could not make weapons. The text does not say how they accomplished this, but it is clear that they were very successful from the following verses. 1 Samuel 13, 19 Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share, his coulter, and his axe, and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks, and for the coulters, and for the forks, and for the axes, and to sharpen the goads. It seems Israel was content to allow their enemy to force them into submission. They even went to them to sharpen their tools when they had their own files. The farm tools became their only weapons. 1 Samuel 13 Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul at Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan and Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. Saul was married and already had grown sons when he became king. Here he places his son Jonathan over a thousand men. Later Jonathan will become a great friend of David's after he kills Goliath. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was at Gibeah, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines and that Israel also was had an abomination with the Philistines, and the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore for multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from beth -Avon. The Philistines' huge response to Jonathan's attack upon the garrison of the Philistines at Gibeah sent Saul packing from Michmash to Gilgal. The Philistines then claimed Michmash for their camp. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. King Saul lived at Gibeah. Samuel lived at Ramah. They were to meet at Gilgal, because a Philistine garrison from Philistia threatened Israel by camping in Michmash. The Philistine army at Michmash was such a threat that Israelites were hiding and even crossed the Jordan River to hide in Gad and Gilead. King Saul gave up waiting for Samuel the priest to meet him at Gilgal and took it upon himself to offer a burnt offering requesting God's help. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now thy kingdom shall not.
continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be a captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose and gat him up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin. In going to Saul's city, Gibeah, it seems Samuel had not completely given up on Saul, although he may have gone to Gibeah because he wanted to pray for Saul with the righteous men at the school of the prophets which was in Gibeah. After Samuel reprimanded King Saul for making the sacrifice, Saul also went to Gibeah, which of course was his home. His army accompanied him there, but they made no attempt to confront the hordes of Philistines to their north in Michmash. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan his son and the people that were present with him abode in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash, and the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. The Philistines were not sitting idle. They were plundering the surrounding territory, bringing in provisions for their army, and causing even more terror to the unarmed Israelites. King Saul's son Jonathan was a courageous man, full of faith in God. He was impatient, watching his father do nothing as the Philistines gradually devoured the land of Israel. He decided to make the first move against the Philistines without his father's permission. 1 Samuel 14. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Jonathan said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Jonathan and his armor-bearer climbed over sharp rocks to reach the Philistines. Jonathan predicted that if the Philistines said Jonathan should come up to them, it would be a sign that God would fight for them. And both of them discovered themselves into the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor-bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor-bearer after them, and they fell before Jonathan and his armor-bearer slew after him. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made was about twenty men. As Jonathan and his armor-bearer fought, God caused an earthquake, and the Philistines fled, and they were so afraid that they ran over one another to escape. When Saul's watchman told him that the Philistines fled, he had them count his men and discovered that Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. Saul only had six hundred men with him in Gibeah, and the priest he looked to was no longer God's prophet, Samuel, but Ahiah, the great-grandson of Eli, Saul had also brought the Ark of the Covenant to Gibeah from its safe keeping in Abinadab's house in kirjath jearim in an effort to entreat God's favor. When Saul realized Jonathan and his armor-bearer were battling the Philistines, he called for Ahiah the priest to bring the Ark of God to the battle. But while he talked to Ahiah, the noise of the battle increased, and he went to fight without the Ark. The Hebrews that had been hiding were joining the fight. Saul made a foolish decree. He said, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged of mine enemies. So none dared eat all day, and they were very hungry because of the war. Jonathan did not know about his father's decree, and ate some honey he found in the woods. After he ate it, he discovered his error. He rejected his father's decree as troublesome, and said, all the Hebrews should eat so that they would have enough strength to continue fighting. King Saul's hungry army ignored his order to fast. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. It was a sin for Hebrews to eat blood. 
Saul immediately saw to it that the animals were properly bled before the troops ate the meat. King Saul made another unwise decree. He commanded that his army must continue the battle all night. His new advisor, the priest Ahiah, suggested they consult with God first. When they asked God's counsel, he did not answer. Saul discovered that Jonathan had eaten the honey. Jonathan confessed, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in mine hand, and lo, I must die. But Jonathan was not rebellious in eating the honey, and was not worthy of death. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. Saul's plan to fight the Philistines all night until they were totally destroyed was overturned because his people were too weak from not eating the result of his bad judgment. His bad judgment also caused his army to refuse an order when he threatened to execute Jonathan. Saul learned from his mistakes in his battle, for he became a great military leader. These verses summarize the wars of King Saul's 40-year reign. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab and against the children of Ammon and against Edom and against the kings of Zobah and against the Philistines and whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. And he gathered an host and smote the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled him.